Hey everybody, Rachel Varga here, advanced aesthetic nurse since 2011. I've helped a few celebrities in my day. I'm definitely in the know to help you understand if a celebrity is being overtreated and how you can avoid their outcome. Or if they look amazing, I can even demystify the process of receiving a few of those treatments for yourself. Stick around as I am going to dig into what I think Jennifer Aniston has been receiving. What do you think that she's had done? Just a disclaimer, I am not here to criticize people. I'm here to enlighten you as to what I think that different celebrities are having done as I've helped thousands of clients since 2011 receive skin and laser rejuvenation, injectables, and guide them through their plastic surgery process. Let's get started. Jennifer Aniston has actually been a spokesperson for a few different laser companies. Those include Fraxel and Thermage. She was also a spokesperson for Smartwater and Aveeno. In my professional opinion, I really think that Jennifer Aniston's had pretty much just about everything done facial-wise. That includes a really good medical grade skincare routine. She probably gets things like hydrofacials and chemical peels every couple of months or so, or at least with every change of season, and definitely is receiving skin boosting, collagen boosting laser treatments. She did represent different lasers like I mentioned Fraxel and Thermage, and those were maybe some of the best technologies about 10 years ago, but technologies are constantly advancing, and the outcomes that you want from your laser treatments are going to be affecting things like pore size and pigmentation. In my opinion, there are better devices out there at this time. Even just knowing she was a spokesperson for these two laser modalities, it's a pretty safe bet that she did have a number of them. She had quite a bit of sun damage growing up. She is that skin type that just goes, you know, golden bronze in the sun. She's what I would consider to be a Fitzpatrick skin type three. So for me, I'm about a two. So when I go in the sun, I just like burn like nothing. And someone like her, she tans really easily. And with that, when you're younger, you can actually do a lot of sun damage. So what I think she's been doing regularly is receiving laser treatments to kind of correct a lot of that sun damage. I also definitely think that she's having injectables. So things like neuromodulators like Botox, Eomin, and Dysport to her forehead, around her eyes, uh, probably her, her nasalis and her jawline muscles as well. And I absolutely think she's getting dermal fillers done to her cheeks, her jawline, and her lips. It looks really great. There have been times where I've seen her that she has looked a little bit puffy to her jawline actually. That's why I know she's actually been receiving these volumizing treatments. I wouldn't really be surprised if she's had upper eyelid surgery because that's a really common plastic surgery procedure for people to have, especially after age 40. Pretty much everybody gets hooded and droopy eyelids. So this is a really common, pretty much, you know, one to two week downtime procedure. And it's considered to be not very painful. And you have a little bit of swelling and bruising for a few weeks. With most facial surgeries, you actually look pretty good. Like your final result after about a year. I recommend having things like eyelid surgeries done by an oculoplastic surgeon. They are a specialized surgeon that dedicates their whole career to essentially treating the eye area and the eyelids. And you only get two eyeballs and they need to function and be healthy. So I always recommend that people get eyelid surgeries done by these types of specialists. What treatments I suggest she have more or less of done, I actually think that she's seeing a really great provider who is kind of keeping her on track with the journey of aging well, but I would definitely figure that she has a really good relationship with someone like myself at her favorite clinic that she probably pays a visit to every one to three months. The neuromodulators are repeated every three to six months and dermal fillers every one to two years or so, and then laser treatments about one to three times a year at least. That's what I highly suspect that she's having done. I also want to mention that her body looks fantastic, so I wouldn't be surprised if she has skin tightening treatments. A big word of warning here because a lot of skin tightening treatments out there are just really flaky devices that feel like a hot stone massage. A lot of them don't really do a whole lot. I think she looks really good because she's also taken good care of herself, but she did have a lot of sun damage, so she's probably working extra hard to combat that. 
at her age. Let's break down how you could receive similar results to Jennifer Aniston. Meeting with someone like myself or someone at your local plastic surgery or dermatology office will kind of go through their own assessment. Everyone has a different way of uh, educating and assessing people. I like to do it really thoroughly because I don't always know what's right for my client, whether it's their budget or their lifestyle. So I like to provide all the information and then they can kind of resonate with it. What this would look like for the average person is essentially spending maybe about $200 on skincare every two to three months or so, uh, about anywhere from 500 to 1100 on neuromodulators every three to six months, and an estimation of probably about one to $2,000 every six months to two years on dermal fillers. Laser treatments, she's probably spending well, she's probably not paying for them, <laughs> in all honesty. She could be um, basically getting promo treatments as a celebrity, as a lot of uh, US dermatologists and plastic surgeons do, so that they can have bragging rights for treating people like this. But for the average person, you're looking at spending anywhere from $500 to about $1,500 per laser treatment. Some lasers, like the ones that she used to rep for, like the Fraxelin Thermage, I really feel like they're not the best technologies anymore and they're really expensive for what they are actually. I recall some clinics charging about $2,000 even for a thermage treatment, which isn't really worth it. So a lot of times I will recommend like an Erbium or a cold laser, which is great for pore size tightening and then IPL or intense pulse light for pigmentation reduction and sun damage improvement. She likely is receiving treatments to her face, her neck, her chest, and her hands, and she could even be getting laser treatments on her arms and legs a couple of times a year also. Tips for avoiding looking overdone and keeping it natural is to communicate what you want with your provider. It's important to kind of suss out if you jive with them by really being satisfied with the amount of assessment and education that they're giving. Also take a really good look at the provider as well, because if they look fairly non-human, then you know over time you might also. I always recommend finding a clinic that has a look that you like. A good provider will give you an in-depth education and assessment on various options. And they should of course look natural themselves. If they don't, you should run for the hills. That was a little joke because Beverly Hills is very much known for plastic surgery anyways. That's my recommendation, is to always look at who's potentially doing your treatments for you. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned because in the next video, I'm going to be talking about Jane Fonda. For more free information and guidance on rejuvenation procedures and skincare, head over to rachelvarga.ca and please leave your comments and questions below. I'll see you in the next video.